Good afternoon. We're here this afternoon in a work session to further discuss the superintendent's recommended fiscal year 2019 budget. Um, we'll be working again this afternoon with the superintendent and staff. It's a continuation of a discussion that began in work session on December 19th. Does everyone have the information provided in their packet? So, we're good. All right. Dr. Michael? Thank you, President Williams, members of the board. Uh, today, we're available to really respond to questions that you might have since the last time we had the work session. Uh, I've asked staff to just do a brief review of some of the information that was presented since we last met. Um, as anticipated, uh, towards the end of December, the county was identified as a low effort county, uh, which mandates a certain amount of money be um, awarded the school system based on the county, the best I understand it, not keeping up with the average increase of maintenance of effort across the state. And maybe staff has a little bit better explanation of that. Um, but that's a new piece of information we have, but we're gonna start out with just a brief review that kind of an overarching view of the budget uh, itself in a couple of slides, and then we'll certainly open the floor up to your questions. So, David? Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, as you remember from December 19th, uh, we reviewed some revenue factors. We also reviewed our expenditure factors in the budget. Um, is the PowerPoint ready to go? All right, so we have, uh, we have the bottom line is that to balance this budget, we need $5 million in new revenue. Uh, we had a preliminary state funding estimate of somewhere between one and $3 million. Uh, we have not yet received the state estimate. We won't get that until we think January 19th uh, because it's usually released the Friday after the budget. The governor pre pre presents his budget to the legislature so we think we'll get at least one million based on things that we've seen on the increase of the foundation program, what we know about our English language population, what we know about our farms and so forth, uh, and the guaranteed tax base none, none money. So we, it's still, still early, but we think we'll, we feel comfortable with the one million and it could be a little higher. Of course, the, uh, the local funding situation, there's very little change in maintenance of effort the regular maintenance of effort because of our enrollment being flat. We know the disparity grant was a one-time deal for this year, and it's a small difference. And then we uh, have calculated the low effort status. We were, we were thinking before in December that we would be in that situation. It appears that Washington County you know, will, is in that situation, so the commissioners will have to give us an additional $1,261,510. That could vary by a few dollars based on where they do the rounding. This is a number that we calculated, but it should be very, very close to what the state releases when they release actual numbers. Uh, therefore, we would be asking the county commissioners for an additional request above the required maintenance of effort funding of between $757,000 and, and $2.7 million. So again, the $5 million is, is the grand total. And it's important to note um, that that is a conservative budget. We have gone through uh, the budget very much and, and identified some savings, which we'll get into. Um, some things that we want to do with this budget, we want to enhance our school readiness through expanding our early learning initiatives and pre-K programs. Uh, we know that only one-third of our students come ready to learn in kindergarten, so we want to see what we can do to enhance that and, and improve student outcomes. We know that uh, we need to meet the changing needs of our existing population. We have an increase of about 100 students this year that are English language learners. Uh, we have uh, a need in special ed. We want to uh, bring more of those kids in to enhance their, uh, the classroom experience and so forth. Uh, we also have a need for social worker and a pupil personnel worker or so. Um, <clears throat> we also would like to provide fair compensation for our employees, and we know we'll have some increase in the health insurance cost. Preliminarily, we're looking at a 5% increase for our medical, 
and no increase for dental or vision at this time. But uh, we will revisit that as the budget process continues. And then we also know that we have some costs that are put upon us by the state legislature. Uh, we don't know this for sure, but we, it, it seemed likely that there will be some kind of a bill to provide sick leave for substitute workers and temporary workers. So we've provided a quarter of a million dollars for that. And we know that the, uh, we, we believe the pension administration fee will increase as it has in, in recent years to, uh, to offset the technology cost that the state is, is implementing some new technology for the pension system. So just a few key points for this budget. We've gone through uh, non-position related cuts and identified $2.2 million in savings, which is a substantial amount. We know that uh, we've got a cost increase in health care, and the proposed compensation increases is more than our $5 million increase in revenue that we're asking for. Uh, it's $1.1 million more, and this is the fourth year in a row, at least, that that's been the case, that, that we've, what we've put into compensation and benefit increases has exceeded the amount of our new revenue. So we've had to look elsewhere in the budget to make cuts to cover those costs. We know that uh, almost 87% of our budget is staff-related, staff and the uh, benefits associated with the staff. And so if we have to make any meaningful cuts, it's probably going to be in that area because most of the remaining budget uh, is essential services such as transportation and staff development and technology and you know a lot of other supporting services that are absolutely essential. So that's where we are leaving it at this point. And we're certainly glad to go through the budget in detail and, and address any questions that you may have had uh, come up over the last two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. So at this time, we'll open the floor for questions from our members. <clears throat> Thanks, Mr. Gessler. Um, since I wasn't here last time, I did review the video, so I'm hopefully I'm not repeating some questions. Um, but I did thus uh, forward some to our our um, team here, and uh, I just wanted to um, review them again with them so we can um, find some of those answers. But uh, um, Mr. Pru, I think um, I had asked a question about the impact aid. Um, could you explain that a little bit, the federal income aid, where that comes from, and sure. what work we have to do to get that? Sure, and Mr. Brandenburg or Mr. Sisler, if they can feel free to chime in as well. But impact aid is, is federal revenue that comes as a basis of uh, our, our parents of our students being employed by the federal government. So we go through a lengthy process every fall uh, to send paperwork home to the parents to determine where it is that they're employed. That paperwork is compiled at each of the schools, then brought back in here actually into my office, where it's uh, additionally compiled more because we have to actually determine the actual numbers of individual uh, residents that work uh, at particular installations or facilities. Uh, that then is gen generated over to the federal government for funding. So uh, you'll note, let me get back into the right line. Find page one. Um, yeah, so we have federal revenue, here we go. So we're budgeting $30,000 for that line item. It's come in uh, at 27000 in FY16 and 25000 in take, FY17. Take the whole board to the page. Sure, on uh, page so one of page 41. one of 41. Middle of the page, it's the only revenue item listed as federal revenue there in the center of the page. In FY16, we received $27,900. In FY17, it's $25,700, and it's budgeted for 30. Uh, several years ago, this was a much larger number. It might have run in the several hundred thousand line when we had more federal employees uh, living in Washington County. As that number has decreased, uh, you know, the, the closing of, of the Fort Ritchie base, I think, had a significant impact on that value. Um, one could argue that potentially we spend more and probably in man hours on this line item to, to recoup $30,000 uh, than we actually receive. Right. It was over 10 times that amount when we had Fort Ritchie, but that's been a long time ago. And so it also covers students who are um, in Section 8 housing or living on federal property. 
and but the percentage of that st student's uh, allocation is very low. And as Mr. Prue mentioned, uh, the amount's very low because we don't depend on it for a large portion of our budget. So when they're handing out the money, they look at that as a factor also in determining how much we'll get. And the amount that we've received in some prior years there includes adjustments for previous years. So they might have three or four years open at one time and still if, if, they, if they haven't, when they've handed out what they think is the initial allocation, if there are adjustments, we might get a small adjustment here and there. But those amounts are the actual amount that we received for that fiscal year's filing as well as adjustments from prior years. Um, under the other revenue, there's um, other tuition and it was for $8,500. What was that? I believe that's evening high school. We verify that there. We've also, two years ago when we talked about adding Children's Village or supporting Children's Village, we had included some revenue that we perhaps we may receive from Children's Village and about 5,000 of that 8,500 we had estimated perhaps as coming from neighboring states, school districts to visit Children's Village because we knew some Pennsylvania schools or other districts came to Children's Village at that time. <clears throat> On page 24 of 41, under student transportation programs, just a question here under garage employees. Um, it shows a, a deficit of $91,901. Can you explain, is that just one, em, one employee? That was, go okay. ahead. We had, uh, as you may recall, during the first quarter budget adjustments, we reduced uh, one employee through attrition in the garage. Uh, it was, I believe, as a collision technician. Uh, but we also had several retirements within the garage within the last year. So as part of the annual budget process, we right-size uh, salaries to what uh, individuals are actually earning during the current fiscal year. So uh, 91, while it seems large for one employee, it's actually the employee plus uh, adjustments made for other employees moving into new positions. Okay. okay. Um, on the following page, page 25, um, under uh, vehicle fuel, oils, et cetera, um, where are we setting right now yeah. this year? Uh, earlier today I looked at it and if we look at we've spent 321,000 to date so that would be 41 percent of the budget and if we compare that to on a 180 day school year that's right around 41 percent too so we're pretty much in line and the expense may end up even being a little bit more because we're usually a little slightly in arrears on paying expenses related to that so we'll be over, we'll be over the perhaps I mean prices have been up this school year versus last school year. We also file um, tax refunds on a quarterly basis, so we haven't gotten the second quarter refund yet. So I think we'll be okay. Yeah, we debated whether to lower that any, but then as we watch, particularly <coughs> diesel fuel go up, that's our largest expenditure uh, with buses and things like that. Um, I mean, it, I think last year I, I have a diesel vehicle. I don't buy fuel all the time. It seemed like last year we were paying about 225, and now it's like 285, 295. So that, even in our bulk rate, that that ends up affecting us. So um, we'd be a little hesitant to, to change that. A number of years ago, as you recall, fu uh, diesel fuel was four dollars a gallon, and we did revise this number probably down from that time period. Um, so it's just a little bit hesitant to move it very much right now. It is obviously above our historic path still. That's all I have for right now. Okay. Anyone else? <coughs> a little wait time. <laughs> I, I'm just looking here. I got a little okay. another thought here. Um, under the elected board member services, I noticed that we have uh, meal food uh, for the board. What page? It's on page 33. Yeah, 33. <coughs> under supplies and material. 
um, because I think in the past we've done meals at lunchtime, we don't do as many meals, um, I guess, down at the cafe. I'm just wondering if that, those numbers are a little high because we typically, we're not. So 5,500, could we just carry that forward from past we do, budgets? We do. Yes, that is. That's a carry forward. So historically, you know, you're in the 2,500 range. You've got 5,500 budgeted, so you would have some room there uh, you know, to save some, a few dollars. The only adjustments we made to the board's page was to account for salary, known salary changes, and, and what was required by the new law for anyone being elected. Okay. Do you know what our dues and subscriptions are? Yes, that's... Um, Primarily MABE, we have we have the the MABE uh, dues are based on enrollment, and we also have uh, I believe a Chamber of Commerce in there. You know, I think the other big one is NSBA, the National Association right. of Boards of Education. That and MABE are like ninety nine percent of this dues and subscriptions, I believe. Thirty five thousand dollars, <laughs> a lot of money for for dues, so, but I understand. Just was trying to think, might there. Uh, might be some savings if we didn't all have to join that. The other miscellaneous for eleven thousand. Um, that a lot of that is the uh, retirement dinner, I believe. That's most of it. For gifts and the actual dinner, the meal, dinner, and the and the. And the Retirement gifts, yes. Charge to retirees. Other gaps are charged. So, by way of explanation, we're talking about the retirement dinner that we have for the school system's school system employees, employees, not the retirement board. of board members. Oh, that's not right. a <laughs> celebration right. of yeah. retirement. It's, it's the board. entire system. It's yeah. the entire system that falls under that particular category. We know why. It Falls here? Is it just where it's been paid for historically? Or it's it's, be, it's because it was it couldn't be spread to the different categories. It's, it's just impossible. I mean, it's, it would be very time-consuming to account for how many employees were from transportation and how many from special ed and how many from. So we just we just put it there as a general board you know, function or a benefit for the employees. We could you could argue that it could we could put it under employee benefits, but that's still part of administration. scrutinized for you know having eleven thousand dollar miscellaneous and they come find out it was for dinner <laughs> for us so no it's <laughs> and it did come in under budget the last two years slightly and how often are does the audit um, come up for bid uh, we're actually going out to bid next year it was it was a five-year deal and this past uh, this coming year will be the last year of the five-year arrangement, so we'll be going out to bid about a year from now. Go ahead, Mr. Jones. Okay, thank you, Mr. Justice. Anyone else? I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I know there's reasons for it, but I just ask out of curiosity so that I know. Uh, I just picked out a few of these things. On page 11 of 41, uh, career technology program, uh, line 28, uh, travel. I'm just curious, $40,000 for travel, what, what that entails. I mean. Um, if someone want, might want to uh, correct me, but I think part of that, a, a good bit of that is the uh, Travel for students to attend competitions in the spring, uh, and I don't know a lot about the, uh, the the types of competitions, but I know you know they're career related, and sometimes they, they travel to other states for as part of uh, regional or national competitions. This probably also might also cover staff travel as well. <coughs> uh, Vika, um, you know Tech High uh, Skills USA. FFA programs, things like that, I think is what it's going to be. I'd maybe we can confirm. We can definitely confirm that for you exactly what that's paid for. It looks like, you know, we spent 40000 518 and 38917 so the 40000 hour number looks like it's about the right number. There is some mileage to, to teachers in there. 
there's something here for Frederick Community College that was 2200 for Homeland Security and Emergency Preparation. Um, some kind of a conference for almost $2,000. What was that? Uh, Skills USA Maryland. That's what it was. We hosted uh, Skills USA, I think, every single year she comes around to us. There was some. Uh, It's, it's mostly related to uh, the CTE program and, and competitions and things that happen mostly in the spring. Uh, Anaheim, here's something for SSL conference. I don't know what SSL. Student service learning. Student service learning. That's a couple thousand dollars. And then I was wondering, on, just out of curiosity, again, line 29, I noticed over a four-year cycle there, it was a little over 19000 then it dropped $8,000, and so we're budgeting 12000 same as last year. Uh, these are dues to belong to these various associations, and like VICA and so forth. Uh, is that what that is? And I believe that's correct. That's all right. If you can't find it now, I think as we looked at that line, we were thinking these are things that affect children and students. <coughs> Interest for the most part, we we're so close at 11,963 to 12,000. We just kind of let that number see there's the budgeted amount. We can find the answer. Yeah, to it, it's okay. I mean, you know, I'm just so I know you. just from my own uh, knowledge. So. And then on page 12, I, I noticed a. Again, I'm just curious because I'm a first-year board member and I don't know the history of the past budgets many times. Uh, page uh, 12 of 41. Again, travel, professional development for gifted and talented programs. It fluctuated from 106,000 and a half, and then. 150, but then it went down to 30,000. Now it's back up to 75,000. I think that was one of our right sizing efforts where that was coming out of another account and it was actually gifted and talented travel. So we put it over here in this gifted and talented line. So one of the main items in that in the recent past was for the international baccalaureate required training for us to have that program down in, when they went to Florida just recently, right? The middle school IB training. We've got to go through a series of those okay. to get that uh, fully accredited. And then I noticed their subscriptions and dues varied anywhere from 57 and a half thousand to 40. Now, last two years we've been budgeting 25. I was just wondering how we made that decrease and what all that included, or an example. That would be line 16 on page 12. I've got the, uh, the CTE, back on the CTE dues. Um, we've got several thousand dollars for APEX investigative services. We've got um, $2,000 for the National Academy Foundation. We've got $2,000 for Maryland FFA Association, $1,100 for Inter -Industri Industry Conference, uh, annual curriculum licensing fee. Uh, so then there are a number of things that are just under $1,000 for uh, we, we can give you, we can provide you detail if that's what, what you'd like. We've got Associated Builders and Contractors, American Culinary Found Federation, um, National Fire Protective Association, Vehicle Service Group, Data Renewal. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of different groups there okay. related to that program. Various organizations that we must belong to or be part of. They do this to it, would appear. And again on page uh, 14 then, line 12. Yeah. Let's catch up here with you on Excuse line 16. We'll catch up here with you on line 16 of page 12. Do we have that, Eric? We, one of the main things charged there was for the AVID Center program. That was almost 23000 last year. What was uh, that? 
Avid Center. Avid, oh, okay. Yeah. And then there's several, um, there's about 8,000 for the International Baccalaureate. So that's really the main two things. Alfie, you were heading to page 14, I think. And then on page 14, again, uh, line 12, travel professional development. I just noticed it fluctuated uh, in FY16, 139 and a half thousand to 146,000, and now we're down to 95,000. I have an idea, though, that that's probably something that's been changed and was somewhere else or something, or why the decrease and the actual line item isn't changing in budget for budgetarily. It's staying at 95,000. Right. But we did increase um, back on instructional supervision, I believe, around 50,000, so that our, our administrators probably were incorrectly charged here in some cases in some prior years, and we're accounting for that in instructional supervision now. Right. On page, yeah. Yeah, this this should be just people who are in the classroom or in you know instructional teachers and, and paraprofessionals. Yeah, if you look back at page five, line fifteen. <clears throat> and we're increasing that line um, a little over fifty five thousand. So if you, we would add that to what we actually, to the current budget back on page 14, we'd be in line with what we've spent the last few years in travel for professional development. Oh, okay. so this is one of those getting the right it's category right. assigned to the right, the right place. And then uh, I noticed, and again, I suspect that, again, we're changing categories or something. Page 14, subscriptions and dues uh, under this uh, page went from 60, almost $67,000, and then it was a big decrease, and now we're only spending 7000 So have these been moved, uh, some of these category changes, switches? No, I think we're just carrying over the same budget, and they had moved money within category in some prior years to, to cover that. So what Eric's saying is the budget has consistently been seven, and as staff had funds available from other accounts within the same category, oh, okay. they would move funds to cover expenses they needed in that category on a, different, on a different line item. And we're going to try to make sure, you know, that uh, um, if they need something that's properly classified as an instructional material, that it should be charged to the instructional materials line rather than into the subscriptions line, and it's it's kind of it's kind of tricky on where to classify some of these expenses. Whether because you know when things go electronic, and you just have uh, you subscribe to a particular company's website or or their you know access to the, to get a, a program online, sometimes that's charged to dues or subscriptions rather than to the instructional materials, and and there's no guidance from MSDE on where to charge that because the manual hasn't been updated for technology changes that we've experienced over the last decade or so. Uh, the most recent financial reporting manual update was 2009 and they didn't even address the technology that was in effect at that time. That's all I have at this time. I, I've got some others, but others want to talk, so thank you. Anyone else? I don't have any specific questions except, and this may not be something we can answer right now, but if we're looking at the cost of essentially our initiative to expand pre-K, do we have any, could we put a figure on it? Because I keep thinking when we go to the county commissioners and we're looking for them to expand their, um, you know, spend more for us, I'm sort of, that seems to be the biggest new initiative that we're doing. It's probably the, one of the big, it's probably the biggest new initiative we have for this year, along with our professional development. Um, we're working with, you know, a lot more professional development for staff. So that's probably our two biggest initiatives. Still the driving force behind our request of the five million, as, as David pointed out. You know, we'll be asking um, 
salary and benefits health care costs is over six million dollars we're asking for five million in new money between the state and the county but just to fund salary and raises is over a six million dollar cost that's been true the last three years in a row salary and benefits have exceeded the total cost of salary and benefits for the last which this will now make four if this budget goes through um, just salary and benefits alone have exceeded all new money combined over the last four straight years. So while we look at, at uh, pre-K certainly being a new expense in one way, it's really salary and benefits that's our additional cost. Much of what we've done with, with the expansion of pre-K in the fall and what we're doing here in late January is coming out of other categories um, that we've seen overruns or cuts like we've had with Stride, those types of things. Also, um, the transfer of elementary, we anticipate elementary to drop off, and it has dropped off for the last two years, about 250 students along with what we anticipate for next year. So that's where we're seeing the, the availability of moving about 10 elementary teachers from K to five into pre-K. Um, so we, we can put a figure to what our pre-K expansion cost. Some of it's coming from transfer funds, so if you follow what I'm saying. We, we have individual lines on the, on the first page of the detail summary changes under that tab for the summary if you if you go back past the first the overall page the on that page there uh, section 2b lists new positions for 19 and, and there's uh, pre-k teachers and pre-k paraprofessionals uh, we also have some uh, positions you know that we're putting there in section 2a that we've already uh, done in this year and they have to be added to the budget as well and then but like Dr. Michael said, some of that's from redeployments that we've got down in Section 2C. So, you know, we have to add some lines together, but we could we could get a figure. We have to also include yeah. the benefits. If we just look at 2A positions that we've already, or initiatives we've already started in the current fiscal year, we're just over a million dollars associated with pre-K positions. that's one thing we certainly can share with the county commissioners an investment like that we absolutely anticipate return on that investment um, you know not every initiative we have we always can guarantee returns but I think that's one I can guarantee returns on that we'll see you know show up in kindergarten in the coming years could you mr. Reiner could you Thank you. How much is the professional development tag, price tag? I mean, you just said it was significant. Well, we're redeploying some of the professional development or will next year, how we're dividing that up among supervisors and schools, how that's going to be used. Uh, if we can shift and get these positions out of Title II, which wasn't intended for the mentor teachers, if we can shift those back into the general fund, We'll pick up the Title II funds to be able to use for professional development. So, the increased costs for the hourly uh, costs for teachers will really come mostly out of Title II. Um, the increase to the general fund budget will come out of the mentors coming back into the general fund where they should have been in the past. That, what, what it's going, substantial. What's going to teachers is above and beyond what's currently going to teachers. No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you're right. I mean, that's exactly right. But what I'm getting at is that over over time money that beyond obviously their base salary correct and most of that's funded out of title two but we also have a, a large portion in, in general fund on page 14 of the budget is our professional development for uh, classroom teachers and paraprofessionals and the total budgets about 1.2 million dollars and it reflects a $395,000 increase this year, most of which was bringing those four mentor teachers out of Title II into Title into the general fund. Uh, line one shows the, the mentor teachers, and we have and we have four up above on the first line up there that's not numbered, but it just shows the FTE. You can see the four FTE that's new this year, and so that's $320,000. And then we have other adjustments to workshops and so forth. So the total increase at the bottom there is $395,000. If you look back in FY16 on that very top line of mentor teachers, you can see they were part of the general fund just uh, three budget cycles ago. 
that'll free up money in Title II for more workshops and, and other types of training. Any further questions, clarifications? Just looking at um, the PowerPoint, the uh, focus of FY19 budget initiatives, and uh, Mr. Bickford has already asked the question about the um, expansion of the early learning programs. As I look at those, um, the last one, we, we really have no choice in that. that. That's pending legislation as to how that turns out, correct? So that's not something that we're choosing leave. to add to our, to our budget. The one about sick leave for substitutes. So, um, and then, of course, providing compensation and benefits for employees. That's, that's an ongoing thing. That's not something we're choosing to add to our budget, with the exception of any raises that we Right. We want to, to give, give our employees raises. We want to be sure we provide appropriate health care. We have to maintain the current health plan that we have. So right. that is a choice that we're making, but that is part of the budget process. The, the process. sick leave, the sick leave is one inflicted on us by the right. by the government. What what we're hoping is maybe something will change with that bill. Uh, we just keep hearing rumors that that's going to go through. So if it doesn't go through, we would pick up that two hundred fifty thousand somewhere around there, that's, two and a quarter. That's two, two and a quarter. Right. So, so that would be benefits. a reduction in expense or a reduction in our ask to the to this county uh, if that doesn't go through as anticipated but we thought it would be short-sighted not to budget for that based on what we anticipate right now so in terms of choices that we're making as a superintendent and a board that will increase our budget would be expanding our early learning programs and those decisions that we're making about meeting the needs of those very challenging students, our ELL population, our special education students. Okay. So that I guess that's that's what I'm looking for is that there is consensus among board members that those are two things that are important to us as a board moving forward in this budget process that that we want to see those things happen for our students. Is that Yes, and I guess what I was trying to say is I think that's a good conversation when we go to the county commissioners. They're going to want to hear that they're helping solve a problem that we're tackling. Right. And I would think if we go to them and say, you know, we're, we're making strides in improving that awful number of kindergarten readiness, right. can you help us with that? Right. That's a good conversation to have. And I say that because we've had this discussion before um, as part of the budget process that we wanted to do something about pre-K and now we are actively doing something to address that population of students. And so I, I just want to have a sense as a board that yes, in fact, these are initiatives that we are behind and in support of and uh, willing to go to the commissioners to ask for the funding to be able to make that happen. right in characterizing it as you know again maintenance of effort is a formula that is that with this whole Kerwin Commission is that something that could be adjusted might they look at different ways of coming up with that formula I mean we anticipate that if that once that's passed if that passes where the Commission reports issued and then if any of that's enacted into law that it definitely will change how funding's done we don't anticipate anything will affect next year's budget we don't think the Kerwin Commission will make its report until after the session then of course you've got a lot of adjustments to make from that the Kerwin Commission from what I've seen from the draft so far I mean it's talking about increasing state budgets you know a couple billion dollars and mandating that local budgets increase as well um, so it's it's a substantial price tag so it's there's a lot to happen there yet with that with the uh, Kerwin Commission that would um, likely be a change in the maintenance of effort I think it would drive state numbers up. It would also drive local numbers up. 
as well. But that's not going to affect this upcoming budget cycle, from what I understand. Um, it'll, it'll actually help us with pre-K if some of what's in the Kerbin Commission uh, would get through. But again, that's all part of that, you know, that overarching fund, uh, funding formula. And there has in the past been legislation that has addressed pre-K through grants and whatnot, competitive grants available to school we've systems. We've taken advantage, a lot of credit to Matt Simler, Stacy Henson, and our team. Uh, we've taken advantage of the federal and state, uh, kind of more it's a federal pass through to the state as long as, and as well as the state money for pre-K. And we've kind of launched out beyond what the state has been able to provide. Several other school districts have 100% pre-K right now that they funded on their own. Um, there is a little bit of state support from a grant that at least runs through 2020 if you do 100% pre-K availability to all of your four-year-olds, but we're just not in a position to get that far at this point. So I think, you know, to me, we're addressing, you know, a, an obvious academic challenge right in front of us. It's nothing that our staff can do anything about. It's the children that come to us, and, and we want to address that. So I think it's just a real obvious challenge that must be addressed. And, and I'm very appreciative of the efforts we've made so far of staff. And I think we're going to see good things come out of our pre-K. Uh, we're going to train our pre-K IAs differently going forward, uh, take advantage of some of the time we have with them to almost train them to be not the equivalent of a teacher, but have very specific skills for pre-K, to be a pre-K IA, I guess is what I'm saying, as well as our staff development for our pre-K teachers. So not only will increasing the number of pre-Ks have an effect on our kindergarten readiness, but the effectiveness of our pre-K going forward, I'm very confident in the next couple of years you're going to see a dramatic change in our kindergarten readiness numbers. Anyone else have anything before we adjourn? Dr. Michael, is there anything that you'd like to no, share with us uh, before I we? I guess just, you know, we think we've built a very conservative budget. We put in a um, fair placeholder for compensation. Our benefits continue to increase. Uh, at some point, I don't know, I know staff's very sensitive to talking about benefits, but our, our health care is obviously something that needs to uh, continue to be looked at or addressed. We have spent a little over eight eight million dollars last year just on the board side of health care with this five percent increase. It's a little over two million or almost two million, two million. Uh, in this year's budget just solely to maintain the current plan that we have. I did see in the paper today, I believe Chambersburg uh, settled a contract issue with their with their group, but they also it would appear to me, I don't know what their health care plan is, they made an adjustment with their deductible. Um, at some point I would encourage staff and, you know, school board, everyone to take a look at our health care. Uh, it's robbing us of the opportunity. Well, it's a great compensation to all of us as employees. It is robbing us of opportunities to advance things possibly with our students and potentially even with raises for staff. I do think the $5 million increase in new money is reasonable. Um, I'm hoping that the majority of that will come from the state to make a, a lesser burden on our county. Um, but I think it is reasonable for what we're trying to do here in Washington County just to kind of try to move forward slightly. So, thank you. All right, if that's all, we'll adjourn. Thank you. Thank you, staff. Thank you.